And good morning to you. It's Daybreak at iFiber One News Radio. I'm Jeff Slecky. Hope you're having a good start to your day. Got a great guest in studio here to talk about an issue that uh, came up last week. It was uh, in the wake of a couple of horses up in the north part of the state had to be euthanized in Snohomish County. They had a form of equine herpes. There was an outbreak there of EHV1. So we uh, reached out to Kathy Haig to bring her on to talk a little bit about this uh, for us. Good morning. Good morning, Jeff. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Uh, so talk to me a little bit about this. Uh, it was a uh, quite disturbing when I read the report and we started to kind of talk about it here on the Daybreak show. It can't be contracted by humans. It's a virus EHV1. How common is this in horses and here in the Northwest? The virus itself is ubiquitous. Uh -huh. It is everywhere. Most horses by the time they are a few years old have been exposed and the virus stays in their system okay. and can be shed from time to time. It is a herpes virus, which is a lot like a cold, sore virus or a respiratory, any kind of cold. So people have our own herpes viruses. Uh -huh. uh, dogs have their own and horses have this particular one, EHV1, has three forms. It can be just a cold, just a little bit of a respiratory problem, a little bit of a cough, a little runny nose, maybe a little fever of about 102 degrees and get over it and never be sick again. But there are three forms of the infection and one is the respiratory. The second, the one we do vaccinate for and have to vaccinate fairly frequently every two or three months to try to really protect a horse wow. is uh, from mares having an abortion. Uh -huh. um, it can affect the fetus being alive uh, for a while and then dying and causes the abortion. And that one has been around and that vaccine has been used a long time. The third form, which is called myeloencephalopathy, it has the effect of basically ruining the uh, covering on nerve tissue. So, you know, if you have an electric cord, you have a rubber covering. Yeah. Well, that we have myelin in our bodies that covers those nerves. And so if it destroys that, it shorts out all the electrical system. And most horses that actually come down with the disease uh, have paralysis in their back legs. They sit down uh, kind of like a dog. They usually cannot urinate and defecate normally. And then it can progress to the point where they're comatose and, and laying down. Most of these horses are actually euthanized. The reason being, it is so infective. Wow. And so if you had a horse and you want to be sure it's healthy, you the main thing you would do would be take its temperature every day because one of the most cardinal signs is that it has a fever of about 102 degrees. Knowing how to take the temperature on your horse is a very good thing. I bet. I bet. What's an average temperature for a horse? About 99. Okay. So just maybe a, little more, a little warmer than we are. Just a little bit. Yeah. What was it about these, this outbreak uh, and what of the three versions of the EHV did, did these horses get? And, and so you mentioned in, infectious. Uh, I see that some places in, in Olympia are, are saying, hey, we don't want to see any horses at least until this gets kind of cleared up. Is that a prudent measure? Uh, the prudent measure is to not bring any horse ever onto a facility that has a lot of other horses without quarantining that horse for a, at least 10 days. And if you really wanted to do the best thing you could would be 30 days. Wow. Again, the infection is spread mostly through mucus, sneezing, respiratory coughing. Um, they didn't think it lasted very long in the environment, but they've also realized that water can, it, especially if the water is a little bit warm, maybe just a little bit salty, um, the virus can maybe live for weeks. So isolating any horse coming onto your facility is really all you need to do. Again, the horse, horses that died, were it was significant, but knowing those signs, and any horse that has those signs is to be quarantined right in the spot that they are, not moved around. The horses that are in the barn that have not been around that horse could be moved out to a separate facility, but again, not to where there's another 40 or 50 horses. Right. So it's a, it's a pretty complicated process of quarantine. And by doing that, 
um, they were able to probably save a lot of horses. There were 50 to 60 horses in that stable. There were about 16 horses that got sick and about seven or eight of them that died. Mm -hmm. And the others will be okay. You have Hague Veterinary Hospital and horses. What's one of the purviews you guys deal with? People can bring their horses in? Oh, sure. They can bring them in or we can go out. Um, we've done out calls around this community for 40 years. Make house calls out But to there's folks. not as many horses as there used to be. So it's, uh, it's slowed down quite a bit, especially after the uh, financial crisis in 2008. A lot of people just couldn't couldn't really afford to take care of horses anymore and wow. haven't brought them back so much. Huh. Isn't that interesting? So the Hague uh, Veterinary Hospital, you can give out your phone number if you want so people can know if they want to uh, get more information for that or any sorts. Of, uh, you do all animals or what's the deal? We do. We consider ourselves living sort of at the edge of the world. We try to help everybody. Uh -huh. We may not be able to do it ourselves, but if you have a problem, we will help you get to where you need to get the help that you need. And it's on Walker Park Road, uh, 426-1840? It is. Uh, I would like to say also that if people want to know more about this disease, they yeah. should go online and look up equine herpes virus dash one mm -hmm. or EHM. And the University of Davis has a, a really good write-up about it and gives oh. you the most information.